Hi and uh, welcome to another video. Today I'll show you how you can get started with Docker Compose. Let's first answer the question, what is Docker Compose? In one sentence, Docker Compose is a tool that allows you to run, meaning starting and stopping, multi-container Docker applications with a single command. So you can, with one Docker Compose command, you can start multiple containers like front-end web applications, there are back-end database containers, um, and other services in one single command. You can read more about uh, Docker Compose at docs.docker.com forward slash compose. Before we get started installing Docker Compose and using it, let's make sure that Docker is installed. So you can just run a docker-v and you see I have version 2010 installed. Not that the version is really important right now, but we just want to make sure that Docker is present on the system. Installing Docker Compose is straightforward. We can head on over to docs.docker.com forward slash compose forward slash install and follow the instructions. I'm running on a Linux system. It is not specific to Ubuntu. The only special case here is Alpine. However, on all other Linux systems, it should be as simple as downloading the binary and then just given the correct permission. So let's go ahead and simply copy this command. We go back to our command line, paste it in. Let's go ahead and download it. It has been placed in our um, user local bin docker compose. This is where the file lives right now. And if we go on back, there's one more step we need to take and we need to grant or um, apply execute on this file. So let's go ahead and copy this command. Go back to our command line. Paste. And here we go. So let's see if um, Docker Compose is really available on our path and if we can use it. So uh, we can run a docker dash compose and then simply a dash v and here we go docker compose version 1292 has been installed and we are ready to rock and roll with docker compose before we can run docker compose we need to write a docker compose.yaml file so let's take a look at a very very basic um, docker compose yaml file so I will break it down real quick. The first one that you need to mention here is the version. The version refers to the Docker Compose file version. There is a table that you can uh, reference on docs.docker.com um, and it will give you the different Compose file versions and how they correspond to your Docker engine release, um, meaning your Docker engine version. Um, at this point, I'm using 3.9. It has been released already. This table has not been updated. Um, nonetheless, um, you can use any of the other versions here too, as long as the version corresponds with it correctly. Um, going back, uh, then in a Docker Compose file, we um, define services. And these services are broken down. We give it a service name. Um, I don't have to call it web. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. I will call it now service one, for example. And then we need to give it the container name and then we give it the image. So the container name, I will show this in a second or once we start this, um, where that comes into play and the image is an image that I have built already and is currently available on my uh, local um, instance of Docker. So with that being said, this is a very straightforward, very simple example of a Docker Compose file to just start one single container and that's it. So let's go ahead and see if this would work. Um, let's go back to our command line. 
I moved over into the correct directory already. So let's first make sure that this uh, container 1 version 1.0 is actually available on my system. So I can do a docker images. And let's see a lot of stuff going on here. Here's my container 1, 1.0. Perfect. Um, let me clear my screen. To run Docker Compose, um, and then so that Docker Compose picks up my Docker Compose uh, YAML file, I am in the correct directory already. So all I need to do now is just to start my Docker container, is run a docker dash compose up. And that's it. And I hit enter. And you see, it did create a network to run uh, my Flask server on, which uh, my container contains a Flask server. Um, it's uh, creating a default network here. And then it's running my container, and there we are. That's all it takes to run this. So let me stop this, and let's see what else we can do. Sticking with the example of a single container for right now, let's say we want to go ahead and we want to run our container, starting it with Docker Compose, and we want to expose um, port 5000. This is a Flask application, and we want to expose that on port 80 so that we can browse to our web API and actually see it. So let's see how we can do that. If I'm going back to my Docker Compose file here, now what I would need to do is simply add another tag to it. And what we we'll want to add to it is simply ports colon next line dash and then 85,000. Um, this is similar to how you pass the port into your docker run command for example. So let me save this and let's go back to the command line and see if we can run this. So let's go over here. Let me clear my screen. And we just run a docker compose up. And we want to run it in detached mode. Let's hit enter. It's creating our container. It's done. And we can run a docker ps. Perfect. This works too. And now let's see if we can actually access our container by simply going over here. And we just go to 127.0.0.1. And there is my message from container 1. And now again, if I go back and I want to shut this container off, shut it down, all I do here is, is just run a docker compose down and I run this and if I'm now running a docker ps you see there is no containers running. This is perfect. So far we've been looking at just starting a docker container that has been built already with docker compose. So let's go ahead and actually use Docker Compose to build a container and then put it on a specified network. Here I have moved into a different directory in which I have my application file. As I've said before, simple Flask application, one endpoint. I have in this directory my Docker file. I'm using Alpine Latest, do my dependency installs, copy my app.py over and execute it. And I have in here a Docker Compose YAML. So what is different between the one that we had before and this one now is that I'm not giving it an image name and I'm telling it to build the uh, image and build it. The dot here donates um, or, or tells it to use the docker file in the local directory. So um, docker compose will build the image for us and I also want to specify the network that this uh, container will be running on and in order to do that here we have our services defined. We need to define our networks. You give it a name. In my case I gave it just base net and I'm using an existing network so I've got to give it the name to show you. If I just do a docker networks ls 
Docker network, no plural. Um, but you see here, I do have a network called my network available already. So I can go ahead and use that. So um, with that being said, the difference now is that we're not using a Docker image that exists already and we build it and we'll take it from there. Before moving over to the command line, we need to give our service a name. I missed that. So I will just call the service service1. And now we need to move this over one, two. Okay, and now we can save this and we are good to go. So let's move over to our command line and execute the docker compose command. So here I'm in the command line and now we just run a docker compose app and we want to run it in detached mode and we'll see it is creating our image it's building it from the docker file present and it's executing it this is perfect stuff and now let's see if we still can go ahead and actually access our endpoint so we go to 127.0.0.1 hit enter and there's my message from container one this worked beautifully and now we can just run a docker compose down hit enter um, just a word of warning if you do use an existing network on your docker system that you run locally and you run the docker compose down it does remove the network so it would remove the network if you run docker compose up again you will see it will create the network again and it will use the default driver. You can define different drivers, but you may want to look that up in the Docker Compose documentation. As a last example, let's go ahead and actually run two containers that will communicate with each other through Docker Compose. Here's my Compose file. The two containers are two very simple socket applications written in Python. Um, one is a server, one is the client. I have defined my services here and I have defined my network. So what will happen is the client will send a message to the, the server and the server will just echo it back to the client. Um, the way this will work is we will run our docker compose command and then we should be able to see the communication in the logs. So let's give that a try. If I go over and I just run a docker compose up dash d it's creating my network it's creating container one container two everything is fine now what I need to do is I need to run a docker compose a because both containers have shut down already and if I now take a look at docker logs and then I'm looking at um, let's say the client first so container two container 2 you see here it received a hello and this hello was sent back from my container 1 so if I do a docker logs container 1 you will see here it got a connection from container 2 um, which was at this IP address it received a message called hello and reserved uh, returned this message back so uh, this now goes to show how you can start two docker containers through docker compose which is much easier if you have multiple containers in your application to run them this way rather than needing to start all the containers separately this brings us to the end of uh, this demonstration i hope you found this helpful i do appreciate your time and thank you for watching see you in the next video